wheel on hickory beam puzzle. Can you solve for B? Now this really isn't a puzzle, it's just an algebraic exercise. So we're going to start off with the wheel, and we're going to say the radius is R. We're going to then place that wheel on a beam made of hickory. I'm going to use the letters H and B, and that beam is of length D. Next, we're going to tell you how far the wheel is from the left edge of the beam. Now that's the closest point on the wheel to the left edge of the beam, and we'll call that H. Now with those three values, you can actually determine the distance from the left edge to the point of contact. In fact, you only need H and R to do this. So you're first going to find the, var the value of T, the distance from the left edge to the point of contact with the wheel and the beam. And this is going to be in terms of R and H. Next, you're going to do the same thing with the right-hand side. But to make this job easier, you can draw a series of right triangles on this diagram uh, to make the uh, concepts easier to understand. So on the right-hand side, you're going to find B. That is the distance from the right side of the beam to the nearest point on the wheel. Okay, And you're going to find that in terms of R, H, T, and D. Now again, T was in terms of H and R, so technically you could find B just in terms of three letters, R, H, and D. But the math is much, much easier if you find the intermediate calculation, T, first, and then write your final answer in terms of, of T as well. So again, here are the givens, R, H, and D, and you're going to find first T in terms of R and H, then you're going to find B in terms of R, H, T, and D, and your answer is going to look something like this. The square root of the quantity r plus d plus t squared minus the quantity rth minus d quantity squared. Now, I just made that up. That's just a, a mishmash. That doesn't mean anything. But that's sort of what your answer might look like. Now, uh, please avoid things when you're writing out your answer. Please avoid things where it's going to be kind of unclear what's happening with the parentheses. Are we taking the square root or are we squaring it first? Now, those are inverse operations, but I, I hope you get the point. If, uh, when in doubt, you can always use an extra set of parentheses. Now, speaking of parentheses, you can use any grouping symbols you like. You can use, obviously, parentheses, but you can also use brackets or braces. And here are two examples. So if you have A minus the quantity B plus C, you can use it with nested parentheses. There's nothing wrong with that. But if you use different types of grouping symbols like brackets and then parentheses, it just makes it easier to read. All right. And your final answer is just going to be written into the comments for this video. This is just a, an informal algebra exercise. So please keep your comments civil and clean. Uh, recently, I've been deleting a bunch of comments where people are just cursing each other out. Okay, So if you're just cursing each other out, I don't care if you're on the flat earth side or the, or the globe earth side. If you have nothing to bring to the table but just profanity and insults, I, I just will delete your comment. All right. So uh, your mother might read these comments, so, so try to be, be civil. So here are a few things that are banned. The George Carlin list of seven dirty words, platard, globetard, baltard, and retard. All right. So just engage the other person on topics and ideas rather than anyone's character or intelligence. Lastly, you will never have a completely bad day if you show kindness at least once. By Greg Henry Quinn. Thank you.